concrete forms are all off now. Uh, the concrete's been drying for a couple of days. I am just inside here now finishing up a little bit of plumbing, um, floor drains, things like that. Um, also added some, uh, we also added, decided to add some conduits. Uh, one for the electrical, um, for the main, the hydro main coming in from our solar array. Uh, and also a, a big O, four inch big O that I can hopefully use to bring the, um, the PEX pipe that comes from our outdoor boiler in. Uh, so I added, so this is our plumbing here, uh, all roughed in. I added a, a pipe here um, that goes onto the outside wall here. Uh, when we talk about the basement, sometimes we have a, a wet bar going in over here. Um, so whether it happens or doesn't happen or whether it happens 10 years down the road, it really doesn't matter because as long as the plumbing, the drain is in the floor, then everything else is good to go. Um, I put the uh, floor drain over in the corner there. Now our floor drain just actually drains right into our sump. Now uh, you can see the sump pit behind it there. Uh, it actually just drains into that. Um, the reason it's not coming into our sewage tank is if there's any power issues or anything like that, um, it'll just run into the, uh, into the sump. And also, uh, I always find with the P-traps that are on floor drains, they often dry up and then you get, you get the smell in there. So unless you're adding water to it from air conditioners or anything like that, I always worry about those. Uh, so there's our electrical, uh, inch and a quarter conduit buried. It goes out the, underneath the foundation about here. Uh, and there's also the big O in the corner here that's gonna stand up. There's gonna be a wall running right here once this is all done. That'll be cold storage. This will all be mechanical. So we've got everything leveled now. Um, plumbing's all in and capped. Uh, just sweeping off all around the edges here. And we're gonna start getting some foam board in. Uh, I also took some measurements for our uh, to order our beams and stuff today. So uh, we're in pretty good shape. Um, concrete guys are saying they're hoping for next week, maybe uh, Tuesday, to pour the concrete floor, the slab. That'll be pretty exciting. It means we can start actually building up the basement. Um, we're, the only thing, well, we're hold, we're being held off by the by my work here. Um, but this is Wednesday, so there should be no problems with that. Um, and the other thing is I need steel posts. Um, there's a, a steel post that goes up on each side of the stairwell here, one there and one there. And also a steel post back at the wall there um, that goes up to support the timber frame beam up on the, the first floor. So those are supposed to be here on Monday. So as long as they come on Monday, uh, I can get them bolted to the floor because they actually get put up right on the footing and then we pour the, the slab over top of it so it kind of encases it all. But I'll check back in with you in a little bit. I'm just going to get working on this flooring. Our steel came in today. There's our uh, three, they're three and a half by three and a half square tube uh, beams or post columns, whatever you want to call them. And then this is our, uh, our main support for our living room. Uh, this is a W12 by 30, uh, so it'll it'll span from one side of the one side of the basement to the uh, other, uh, and then these are for by the stairs, and one of them uh, basically they're there because the uh, the timber frame on top these steel beams are going to carry the load all the way down to the uh, the footings. Um, the timber frame doesn't go into the basement. Uh, just because of the size of the timbers we would have needed, um, it just would have looked pretty weird. So we, uh, we'll kind of mask it with uh, some kind of decorative finish. But anyway, I need to uh, put the, uh, the anchor holes in the bottom for the, uh, just use the plasma cutter and get those in there. Uh, and I also need to drill or, uh, drill or plasma cut holes in the top of this beam to, to put a uh, 2 by 8 on top of. But that'll be another day, tomorrow maybe. Hey guys, uh, so today is Wednesday. Um, the concrete is supposed to be being poured on uh, Friday, although there's rains and I don't know, I don't know how the, the concrete thing works. I don't think they're gonna be able to pour it, but they may anyway. Um, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Anyway, I'm just finishing up the last of the projects I have to do. Uh, I was here yesterday uh, 
putting in the, the three steel posts. There's one at the back there, there's one right behind my head, and then there's one right there. Um, the posts are, uh, they're actually bolted right into the concrete. When we poured the footers, we actually put, uh, there's J bolts that go up into the posts, so they're, and then they're wrapped in rebar and all that. So the posts are in there pretty solid. Uh, they have to be, they still have to be level up a little bit. They're pretty level right now, but I'm gonna tie them into the, just temporarily tie them into the, the footings or the foundation of the house, just to make sure that they're perfect. Um, these, it is a timber frame home. Uh, the basement we added on from the original plans, and I really wanted to have these these steel beams as a timber for the house, so it's so it looks beautiful down here when it's all said and done. But the engineer is the engineer was worried about the structural load, and he was trying to make these um, these beams just because we're using eastern white pine, which is readily available to us. Uh, they were going to have to be something like two and a half two and a half feet square or something like that, which is which is a little bit ridiculous. So we ended up doing the steel beams because uh, they're carrying the load from all the way up for the timber frame. But once the house is done, I'll be able to I'll be able to decorate them up and and. Uh, you know, wrap them in, in wood or make it look like a timber or something like that. Um, but anyway, uh, today I'm finishing up the PEX pipe and I'm also kind of <laughs> going backwards in some work. Um, when I bought the, uh, when I was doing the rough-in for the plumbing, um, I called in and ordered all my styrofoam and PEX pipe and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and I was told R10 is, is code, uh, the code board R10 uh, it, they said it was a four by eight sheet, two inches thick. Well, it turns out it's actually two and a half inches thick, um, but I didn't know that at the time. Uh, so I did all my rough-in plumbing based on that, that level of, of uh, two inches. Uh, and it didn't really affect anything except my toilet flange. When I did my toilet flange, I measured off of the footer and I went up um, basically six and three eighths inches. So two inches for foam board, four inches for the concrete floor, and then that left about a three inch space where I could put my, or I could slide my tiles in underneath the toilet flange. Uh, once I got it all down and, you know, two and a half inches, it, it, uh, a couple of nights ago, I realized that my flange is gonna be sunken basically level, uh, just below the level of the concrete. Uh, I, know there's, I know there's ways to fix that after the fact. You can, there's extensions you can add on to your, onto the toilet flange. You can get a, you know, thicker wax ring. But it's really been bugging me for a couple of days just because I've been thinking, what a way to start a house. You know, you're already trying to come up with fixes for something that got screwed up. So basically today, I had enough spare parts here, so I'm kind of going backwards. Uh, I've dug up, I've, I've uh, pulled the foam board off, untaped it, and dug my, uh, my toilet uh, elbow back out here. Basically, I got a tip from my father-in-law, so uh, he's working on a project and I was checking out the plumbing that he had going on there. <laughs> I just said I was checking out my father-in-law's plumbing. Ha <laughs> ha. Anyway, so what I've done today, instead of actually mounting the, the flange on here permanently and then hoping the concrete works out, what I've done, uh, so I've got my 90 back on. Uh, I've glued it down here. It's nice and strong. And then I took a coupler and I just, I just put a piece of, uh, a small piece of the three inch and it's just, it's just pressure fit in there. So it's not, I'm not actually gonna glue that. And then I'm gonna take another short piece, you know, six inches, eight inches, something like that of ABS and stick it down in there. Uh, and then, wind blew it away here. Then I'm just gonna take this sill gasket stuff. Um, so this is, this is the stuff that goes on the top of the foundation wall. You, you lay this down. Uh, and then you put your two by sixes on top of it. And this just kind of, it's a moisture barrier between the concrete and the wood to stop the wood from rotting. Uh, but in this case, I'm just gonna wrap it around these joints, uh, wrap it a little bit thick, you know, quarter of an inch, uh, three eighths of an inch thick, uh, put some tuck tape on it. Then after the concrete cures, I'm able to pull this stuff out and it'll leave me, it'll leave me a bit of a gap all the way around this, this plumbing. And then I can actually pull this connection back out uh, and, and be able to access down into the pipe and everything and get the exact height that I need um, once, the, once the, even the floor finishes in. Then I'll do all this stuff and, and get the, the, the exact measurements so the floor uh, flange, the toilet flange, sits just the way it's supposed to. All right, we are uh, all set up for the pour um, when it happens, hopefully Friday. 
Uh, we've got all the PEX pipe installed. Uh, I'm just going to nail a 2x4 across the very top of these to hold them straight. Um, this room behind me here that's not doesn't have styrofoam, that's the cold storage room. So there's no heat there. Uh, there's a wall going right here. Uh, this will be a 2x6 wall uh, and we'll insulate this wall and this wall and not these ones. Uh, this is the mechanical room here, so there's not, besides where the pipes pass through it, there's not heat in this room. Uh, it doesn't really have to be as warm as the rest of the house. Uh, with that 2x6 wall, we'll insulate it all. Uh, and this, just these little, uh, this little bit of pipe here um, will keep this room warm enough to stop anything from freezing in the winter. And we're well below grade. Uh, this outside wall will be insulated. Uh, there's our hydro main coming in. Um, there's the, this will be the craft room, whatever, hobby room, maybe a bedroom one day. And then there's the bathroom. Uh, this is like open area here, maybe a bar one day. Fireplace will be there. And then uh, that will be the living room out there. Uh, so basically in the end, we have five zones. Uh, the pipes aren't supposed to be longer than about 300, 300 feet or so, 250, 300 feet. So I divided that room in half. Uh, so one zone, two zones, another zone here, uh, a zone in the bathroom on its own, and then the uh, this room here. Quite often when people put in the PEX pipe, they run it just zigzag kind of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The reason I didn't do it that way for the most part is because then what's gonna happen is you're gonna have, uh, I was watching some videos online and it makes a lot of sense. So they've got, what happens then is all your, so your hot comes in and it zigzags back and forth and then by the time you get to this end of that the leg of the that string uh, it's cooler water so what I did is did this the spiral so it goes all the way around uh, comes in and then it, you can see right there in the middle it actually reverses and then spirals its way back out um, and follows the same path as they did on the way in that way you get you get hot kind of spread out of the whole floor and then the cooler water on the return spread out on the whole floor as well so it should be a nice even heat um, I did that in all rooms, uh, except for the bathroom. The bathroom isn't quite that, uh, such a small zone uh, and, and really small spacing. Uh, I'm trying to keep the pipe, I tried to keep the pipe three inches away from the walls all the way around. Um, there's a closet here, so, uh, and then I just tried to heat just a little bit around the toilet, but still left lots of room to be able to um, screw the holes in to hold the, the toilet in place. Uh, I didn't put anything under the shower. Uh, so I think, I think for the most part we're, we're pretty much ready to go for concrete now. Um, it'd be nice to have this as a solid floor that I can walk on and, and uh, you know, not worry about stepping on PEX pipe and everything. Um, so the next step is uh, concrete, um, but more about that next time. Um, until then, have a good one.